So now I'll demonstrate how to sharpen a bevel edged bench chisel using the, the flat edged jig. So first of all, what we need to do is insert the bench chisel into the jig. And the important thing here is for the back of the chisel is facing towards the knobs. Another important thing to consider is the sides of the chisel are directly forced against these two stops on the jig. Then I'm gonna tighten the knob directly above that first. Then I'm gonna tighten the rear knob. And the critical thing for us to establish here is that the gap between the two plates of this jig, they must be parallel. If this is too tight, what will happen is it will begin to take more steel from this edge of the chisel. And the great feature of this jig is that if it's set accurately, if the sides of the tool are against these stops and this is parallel, then this jig will give you a 90 degree blade angle against the edge of the tool, which is what you want with this type of chisel. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. Yeah, I'm happy that that is parallel, and so we'd be ready to insert that onto the support arm. Already got one loaded on the machine. The next thing that we need to do is establish the cutting edge angle. The average angle of a bench chisel would be anywhere between 20 to 30 degrees. And this angle relates probably to the type of timber and application that you're using the chisel on. A 20 degree angle, well that's gonna give you a far keener edge and it's perfect for softwoods. For example, pine, lime, or, or a, a Honduras mahogany. But if you were cutting something like oak and using a mallet, well that, that edge angle is probably gonna to need to be greater, somewhere near 30 degrees. So you really need to gauge the angle in relation to the type of job you want the tool to do. So now I'm going to establish a cutting edge angle of 20 degrees, but because of the hollow grind, I need to add an additional two degrees. So I've set the angle setting gauge to 22 degrees. What I'll now do is place the heel of the jig onto the wheel. And the idea is, is that I get the foot, this flat foot here, to sit parallel with the back edge of the chisel. If I need to adjust this arm higher or lower, I can do this with the micro adjustment here. Okay. So you'll note that I'm slowly sliding the jig from side to side. And really all I'm doing here is just making sure that I wear the stone evenly. If I were just to hold it in the middle, I'd create ridges on either side of the stone. We don't want that. Okay, let's have a look at the finished grind. We know we've got a nice consistent cutting edge angle. The big question is, have we got a square blade angle in relation to the side of the chisel? So I'm using an engineer's square. Yeah, that's pretty good. So the next step is to recreate the ground edge angle on the honing wheel. And to do this, we can simply blacken the edge angle with a marker pin, like that. So then I just need to put the jig back on the supporting arm and eye the angle to see if I've got it nice and consistent with what's already there. I can use this micro setting here to adjust the angle. It needs to slide in a little bit more. I need to get a bit more on the heel. So I'll slide that in. And then using that micro setting, I can just adjust that arm until I get to what I think is the right angle. So I think that's about right. And what I'll do now is turn the honing wheel and take a look what I've got. Okay, well, I'm actually spot on. I'll show you what I've got. 
can you see how I've removed all of that black consistently? So that tells me that my honing angle is exactly the same as the ground edge angle. So I've locked that off on the machine. And to hone, I just simply run the edge along the length of the wheel like that. And this will give me a polished mirror finish that will be razor sharp. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so that's given me a lovely polished finish. But what it has also done is created a burr on the back of the tool. And that needs to be removed now. You could take it off on the buffing wheel, but what we want to avoid is creating a bevel on this side of the tool. So I would recommend that you remove the burr by rubbing it along a flat bench stone like that. Now I can feel that that has removed the burr. Yep. So I'd put it back on the buffing wheel, fine edge, and then we'll test it on some timber. So what I'm gonna do is take a very fine shaving across the grain. How about that? That is a sharp tool, look at that.